listening to the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast, a podcast in sisterhood for female entrepreneurs that serves up savvy, actionable marketing advice and interviews with creative business owners who are in the trenches building their businesses as we speak. The Marketing and Yoga Pants community is for you, the girl on her couch, in her yoga pants, top knot tight, hunched over her MacBook, trying her hardest to get the word out about her business. So in the name of supporting each other while supporting ourselves, bringing community, sound marketing advice, coffee, chocolate, and wine together for you, yoga pants wearing business owner, in a world where followers mean nothing but paying customers mean the world, Join us on this week's podcast episode and in our private Facebook group where you'll meet your soul sisters and build your business in yoga pants. Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. I'm Britt Colo and I'm here today with Samantha Mabe, founder and designer of Lemon and the Sea, a strategic design studio. Thank you so much for joining me today, Samantha. Thanks for having me, Britt. Yeah, okay, so Samantha and I just met on this call. Uh, she reached out. We actually, this get this, you guys. Remember a couple, uh, well, at the time of this recording, it was a couple weeks ago. I published a an interview with Krista Ray, and guess what? Samantha published an interview on her podcast with Krista Ray on the same exact day. So we were just loving on Krista so hard that day. <laughs> um, and so we, we realized that happened, and Samantha reached out, and she said, hey, I think this could work out to be on your podcast, and I agreed with her. So, so I'm really pumped to get to chat with her today, get some insight into her business, her industry, her marketing strategy, and what makes it all tick. So Samantha, are you ready to jump in? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. So first of all, you've got to tell us, how do you earn your living? So I do strategic website design for creative small businesses. And that ranges anybody from wedding professionals to authors. I worked with an agronomist who works with farmers. So it's pretty much anybody who is an expert in what they do and they love serving their clients and need help with a website. Okay. I love that. I love that distinction of you're an expert and you are service. You're really passionate about being service-based. Tell me about the explanation of your studio. You call it a strategic design studio. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that strategy comes into your design? It's not just rainbows, butterflies, and pretty things, right? There's some strategy behind that. Yeah. So most of the business owners I work with have been in business for a while. And so they want their websites to actually work for them. They don't want it to just be pretty. They want to grow their email list or sell more of their products. And so we take a look at what we can do to make those goals actually happen and take a look at the SEO and what is going to make somebody click on a button and actually hit buy now or get in contact with me and then keep track of what's working and what isn't so we can make tweaks get them to those goals that they have for their website and ultimately for their business. Perfect. So smart. Okay. So that being that that's what you do right now, can you tell us the story of how you came to do this with your life? Yeah. So I went to college for architecture and I graduated when it was still the recession and there were no jobs available. And I decided I, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go back to school And so I started doing some website design at a small company. And then my husband got a job in Richmond. And so we moved. And instead of going back to work for somebody else, I started freelancing and doing graphic design. And I offered the whole range of services from PDF templates, logo design, color palettes, websites, everything. And over time, I just learned that websites was what really lit me up and what I felt like I could do well for my clients. And so I've honed in on that and have sort of left the rest of that kind of stuff to the people who really love doing it. Mm, Smart. Okay. So take me back to the, your very first client. You said you were kind of just, you know, offering anything that you could to serve some people, make some money, just figuring it out as you go. So when you first started out, how did you get the attention of and earn your first dollar? So my first client was actually my cousin and she is a performer, 
and she had just graduated from college and she was moving to New York City to start auditioning for stuff. And my aunt called and was like, she needs a website to get her pictures out there. And so I put one together for her. I had just done my website. And so this was like a practice and I wasn't going to charge her anything. My mom was like, you should just do this for free. It's family. And my aunt insisted that I get paid. So I sent her an invoice for a very small amount and <laughs> she paid me. She actually paid me above and beyond what I asked for, but I got full, full creative control of the website and I really got to see what it was like to get paid to do something that I love doing. Mm, I love that. Okay. And so then what was the next step? How did you get your next few clients? They were all, so my next client came to me for a rebrand of like a copywriting business. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know where she found me, but (laughs) we worked together on that. And then after that, it was a lot of referrals and just people spreading the word about what I was doing and people who wanted to take their business. They, a lot of them had websites, but they didn't love them. And so I was just helping them sort of upgrade all of that. And it was really word of mouth and good client experience was leading them to recommend me to other people. Yeah. Boom. That's where it is. When you do good work, people want to talk about it. So tell me about when did your focus start to shift to mostly websites and niching to that person who is the expert and wants to make sure that their website is looking professional and of expert status. When did that happen in your story? I started niching into the type of client I wanted to work with first. And so I realized that what tied all of my clients that I really loved working with together was this service minded or, and really heart centered way of doing business. They knew what they were good at and they had done it, you know, professionally and something else. And had started a business and they were all about serving their clients. And so I realized that it wasn't about one specific industry or one, you know, type of client, but it was the heart behind what they were doing. And that's when I got into figuring out how I could serve them best and Mm -hmm. still have a profitable business without feeling like I was working all the time. Mm. And now how did you do that? Tell me that part. Cause I think that's, man, I hear, well, and I'm sure you hear about that all the time. It's like, I want to do good work and I want to, you know, work with these types of clients. How do I do it without losing my freaking mind? Right. So what, what did you do? (laughs) I started by just sitting down and looking at what I liked most about the people that I was working with and the projects that I liked most. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that was websites And that if I wanted to be able to charge more for my services, I had to offer something more. It couldn't just be a pretty website. It had to do something. It had to benefit them. And so I interviewed a couple of my clients and a couple of my friends who were sort of in that place in their business and looked at what they needed and what they wanted out of a website design or things that they had loved when they had worked with their designer and figured out how I could make my business offer something like that and still, you know, really fit who I was and what I wanted to do. That's speaking my language for sure. And what I like about that is that you didn't have it all figured out in the beginning. I think I come across, I'm sure you come across people all the time trying to figure this stuff out from the get-go and who their perfect client is and who they want to work with. And it's funny because maybe you have an inkling in the beginning and maybe you even feel sure, but until you really start working with these people, you don't know. And so being open to changing and shifting and figuring that out over time and then knowing that it's going to continue to shift and change as you grow too uh, is really powerful. I'm glad that we were able to pull that out of your story because I think that's a pretty important takeaway for anyone that's listening. So now today, are you a one-woman shop or do you have a team behind you at Lemon in the Sea? It's just me. Um, The only thing I outsource is editing for my podcast. (laughs) Well, and that's a big deal. I've, we talked about that before we started hitting record. Yeah. Yes. Podcast editors make the world go around when you have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so now today, 
what are you using to gain and earn clients? How are you doing that? I have learned that the best way that I can get clients that I like to work with is to build connections. And I'm naturally an introvert, so it's not easy for me to reach out to people and to show up in the Facebook groups every day. But I'm learning that I have to be able to do that. And so I'm doing that through my podcast, both by making connections with the people that I talk to and by educating the people that are listening and then just being able to help people. I want to show up Mm -hmm. and help people. So I'm in a mastermind that's hosted by Raina Pomeroy of Raina and co. And that's been a great way to make connections and sort of get in a smaller group that I'm more comfortable in. And I can say, okay, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm good at. How can I help you? you know, what advice can I give you? And then I'm seeing those people start to mention me in Facebook groups or refer me to people that they know. Yes. I like that. Well, I'm definitely an introvert and you're right. You know, sometimes the typical ways, I I don't want to say typical, maybe the traditional ways of connecting with people are just incredibly overwhelming for those of us who just don't flourish in those settings and uh, those large group settings or networking or, you know, the traditional stuff. And so I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that you found a small group setting that feels more comfortable for you. Can you riff on that a little bit and really speak to the introvert that's listening right now? And I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but like, how did you kind of dip your toe in the water to find a comfortable place to connect slash network slash just build those relationships with people that could help you out and that you could in turn help them out? How did you do that? What are some steps? The first thing I had to do was make myself actually get out of my house. Uh, The first networking event I went to was the local Rising Tide group, and I showed up to a meeting. I didn't know anybody, and I was so nervous about going, but I went, and I made some friends, and I was just like, I'm going to make myself do this so that I can get to know people who are running their own businesses, and from there, I just have kept following up with the people that I've connected with. I haven't tried to get to know everybody and I've stayed away from some of the bigger conferences and Mm -hmm. events. You know, I tried going to a couple of those locally and it just, it wasn't for me. I was so overwhelmed that I felt like I couldn't really get anything out of it. So when I've heard about smaller things that I can do, I take advantage of those where there's, 10 people or five people. Mm -hmm. And that way I can see people, you know, a little bit more on my terms. I can get to know them one-on-one. And then when you go to a bigger event, but you already know people, it's a lot more comfortable. Yes. I'm a huge fan of Rising Tide. Oh my goodness. I love Rising Tide. If you're listening and you still have not taken, I don't want to say take the plunge, but taken the plunge (laughs) and attended your first Rising Tide Society meeting. I mean, they're There's so many different chapters and they're all a little different, but uh, when you can find one to pour yourself into and get poured into, oh my goodness, it's so life-giving. I That's a really great first step. I I appreciate that. Okay. So now I want to shift gears and talk about the work you're doing right now. So where's your focus at? What are you working on right now? I'm still doing lots of one-on-one client projects. I've got a couple of websites that are going on um, and I do both customization and full design. So I've got a little bit of both of those happening and I really like sticking with that. I like working one-on-one with clients. And so that's what I'm working on and I'm brainstorming some stuff that's going to hopefully come out in the next couple of months for show it and starting to create some templates. But I am just sticking with the website design, trying to really figure out how I can best serve clients and learn, you know, what the best strategy is for different industries so that I can give them that expertise and that help. Yeah, that's really good. And it seems like you have embraced your natural ability to get in there one-on-one and serve somebody really hard in that capacity. Not everybody has that. And the fact that you figured that out for yourself and leaned into it and built your business around that, I just want to give you some encouragement and praise for that. Because sometimes I think we watch how everybody else does it and we think we have to do it that way. And we we don't have to do it that way. We can do it our way, right? So yeah, yeah I, I support you in that. What's coming down the pike for you? Where do you have your sights set for this year? Any future plans coming up? 
I am working on just growing my business right now. Um, I've got some brainstorming going on with website templates for show it so that people can sort of get that strategic design without as much of an investment. Mm -hmm. And I really want to, like my big dream for this year is to be able to hire a couple of people and support the people that are doing awesome things by, you know, pouring back what I'm making into the industry. I think it's such a cool thing to be able to hire people that are also running small businesses. Yes. I have done that myself. And it is, you feed off of each other because you, you have somewhat of similar take on how this business stuff works, but you're enough detached from each other that you can just grow together. I, yes, I love that. That's so cool. Now tell me, this is like a big, big question. I've, I've asked it a couple of times and then every time the guest is like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> tell me what inspires you in your work? I am really, in- sorry, my dog is growling. <laughs> I heard that. That's okay. That's totally <laughs> staying in. That is the life of the girl marketing in yoga pants, like cat, dog in the background. <laughs> it absolutely it. is. I think he barks more when I'm on a call than when I'm not on a call. Oh, totally. Oh, absolutely. They always get into something as soon as you're on the most important minute of your day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. So what inspires you? <laughs> I'm really inspired by my clients and the things that they're doing. A lot of them come to me and they already have images or they have these really cool ideas. I'm talking to somebody right now who she moved to Italy as a single woman. She's renovating two houses and we're working on her blog. And that's just, it's so cool to see what other people are doing and the projects that they're putting out. And what I get to do in my job is, help them promote their work to the world, which is awesome. Yes. And that sounds like a really cool story. I want to talk to that girl. It's like the real life version of what's that movie under the Tuscan sun or something. She like moves. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that sounds so romantic and amazing. That's so cool. Now, if someone wanted to learn more about how to be strategic with their design and how they show up online, what resources might you point them to? Do you have any in your arsenal, any podcasts, any books, anything to maybe even Facebook groups to dive into and ask good questions in? I really like the Get Back to Design podcast, which is Mm. Krista's podcast. And it's for designers, but they talk about, like there's one episode where they go over your homepage and what should be included. And so even if you're not designing websites, it's really helpful to get sort of that strategy behind things. Yeah. And I think like when you talk to, get into those designer groups, you get some of that strategy. I also really like the Creative Empire podcast and they cover a huge range of topics that all come back to sort of being strategic in your business and doing what makes sense for you and what's going to grow you. Definitely. I am a huge supporter of Creative Empire for sure. And Krista's podcast. Absolutely. And I would imagine that the, you know, you don't have to be as a business owner, you don't have to be an expert designer, but if you can just be educated enough to be dangerous, anytime that you work with a designer, the process probably goes so much smoother because you at least have a little bit of knowledge back there. Like, you know, you're not, I don't know. Do you find that if you're, if your clients are you know, just enough educated, everything goes a little bit smoother? Yeah. It seems like the people who have done a website design, even if they've done it themselves and have started thinking about, okay, how do I get people on my email list? then they know that that's the goal. And so I can say, okay, this is how it makes the most sense or how I've seen it work. And then they can understand that a little bit more. It's not like they're coming in and have never done it before. And so they, when you've never done it before, I think people get caught up in, okay, this color doesn't look right. Or I think it's a little bit too weird here. So it's about looking at the bigger picture and sort of see, knowing that it's all going to come together in the end too. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a really good tip. Okay. One last question we have to end with, I would love for you to look back and tell us what advice would you give to yourself when you were first starting your business, that girl on her couch, hunched over her MacBook, trying to figure all this out. What would you say to her? My biggest advice and what I wish that I knew when I started was to not worry about what everybody else is doing. Mm. I spent a I spent a lot of time looking at what other designers were offering and feeling like I was in competition with them. And I've come to realize that when I stop following along and trying to be like everybody else, then I can do my thing. I can give my best work to my clients and I'm better at it. And I'm better at supporting the people around me because I'm not not feeling like, Oh, I have to charge a little bit less or I have to offer exactly the same package. Um, So it's really, for me, it's about, staying sort of in my own lane, doing what I'm good at doing and not worrying about what everybody else is offering. Yes. Thank you for saying that. And through our entire conversation, it seems like that is really how you've built your business, which I'm so glad that we landed there. Okay. So before we go, Samantha, could you please tell the listeners where they can find you online? Yeah. So my website is lemonandthesea.com all spelled out. And I'm on Instagram at lemon and the sea. And then my podcast is process to profitability. And that's on iTunes and SoundCloud and everywhere else. Perfect. Now, wait, before we go, can you tell me where did lemon and the sea come from? (laughs) That's a question everybody asks me. (laughs) And (laughs) so when we first, I started with a blog and I was going to do DIY projects, but I lived in an apartment. So there's only so much you can do. And that was a name that just came to me one night and it just stuck in my head. And I sat down and I was designing like a logo for it. And I just, I loved the colors. I loved the idea of just the relaxation that I feel like it brings and the little bit of fun and now it's always a good talking point. Everybody asks me that question. Yeah. So <laughs> I like it. It's like fresh and it's like fresh and fun mm-hmm. when you are a little, you f- if you feel like your website is a little drab, fresh and fun feels really good. Like that's exciting. <laughs> so I, there was some, I think there was some divine intervention happening with that name because it's very, it's so I exciting. think so. I love it. <laughs> All right. You heard her girls. Go check her out. Send her some love and then hop into our private Facebook group to hear even more from Samantha over for the next few days. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Marketing in Yoga Pants podcast. Keep the conversation going by visiting marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook, where you'll get to join that private Facebook group I've been talking so much about. There, you'll get to chat with our podcast guests Yeah, they're in there too. And all of the other brilliant creative business owners. We're connecting, we're meeting our soul sisters, and we're building our businesses all while in yoga pants. So come hang out with us. Again, visit marketinginyogapants.com slash Facebook to get in. And one more thing. If you dig this podcast, would you be awesome and share it with someone? This entire marketing and yoga pants movement is nothing without its community. So please share. And if you're really feeling the love right now, jump into iTunes. You're probably already there if you're listening to this right now. And leave us a rating and review. The more of those we rack up, the more the podcast will be found by ladies like you. And the stronger this community becomes. This episode was edited and produced by the podcast engineers. They're pretty great. So go find them at podcastengineers.com. This episode was also brought to you by my online marketing agency, Jam Marketing Group. And you can find us at jammarketinggroup.co. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. And I'll catch you back here next week on the Marketing and Yoga Pants podcast. Love ya. Bye. Bye.